hello for the next 24 hours i am only going to be making foods from avatar the last airbender speaking of someone who is a little late to the fandom i only watched the show two years ago and immediately became obsessed because i love all things fantasy i love it when they incorporate elements into it of course i immediately had to watch the netflix live adaptation that's what really got me started thinking more about the foods in the universe the seafood soup the feast from the earth kingdom the egg custard tarts there's so much good food in the show i actually got the official cookbook and something really cool too is I actually got to speak to the author Jenny Dorsey who spent so much time developing the recipes like how each nation's cuisine specifically draws from a real life culture which I'll talk about more later but I'll just say a lot of the recipes here are actually done very accurately very like in universe which is why some of them are actually a little interesting there's a lot more ingredients that are a little hard to find so i'm gonna go and hunt down some of these ingredients i'm gonna head to chinatown gonna stop by a seafood place all right let's go Good morning! Avatar Day begins today. I'm very excited. There's a lot to look forward to. I'm gonna get started on breakfast. I have my handy dandy cookbook here with me. I actually ended up talking to the author and it was kind of amazing hearing her go through the process of how she created these recipes, how she was really trying to like honor the culinary traditions of each nation. Each of their foods are actually inspired by a specific culture. Water Nation is inspired by Inuit and Yupik foods. Air Nomad's Diet is inspired by Tibetan foods. Earth is inspired by Chinese cuisine and Fire Nation's food is inspired by Japanese cuisine but because they have have conquered so many other nations. They have access to a lot of ingredients, so it's kind of all-encompassing. Honestly, after having that conversation with her, it made me just like even more excited to cook from this book. Now it's just become like an international food journey. I thought it would be fun to start it off with a very hearty meal. And so I'm gonna make maybe one of the most iconic foods from the Water Tribe, the green noodles in the five flavor soup. But with that being said, I also really wanted to make Katara's favorite, which is the stewed sea prune soup. So I'm thinking maybe I can do like a combination of both, find the best parts of each and see if we could blend it together. And because the soup takes around three hours to make, I actually ended up starting the process yesterday. I think a lot of the recipes today involve many, many hours. So, I had to do a lot of prepping. So I ended up buying an entire duck, which is humongous. It's a huge bird. In order to brown it and create like that nice crust to seal in the flavors, I popped it on a rack on a baking sheet and I just let this roast in the oven for I think around 20 minutes. And while that was going, I have a whole fish here that's actually already all prepped for me. It's scaled, gutted, rinsed. They also already separated the bone part for me. So I'm just salting the fish entirely, frying it until it gets some color on both sides and the meat is totally cooked through. Once that's done, I'm just removing the meaty part and leaving in the bones, the head, the tail, and adding in onion and garlic. The duck at this point is getting pretty brown. My oven is totally covered in oil. Then I had to find the largest pot I had because I'm trying to fit everything in. The entire roast duck along with the fish bone. And then I'm adding what is essentially the five flavors that make up the five flavor soup. First, I'm adding these dried baby shrimp. And then what I'm adding is actually these dashi packets. I'm also adding in an extra kombu. Maybe we could cut it up later to make noodles. And then I'm just letting it simmer for a while, removing the kombu before it overcooks, before letting the rest of the broth just simmer for around two hours. And that brings me to this morning where I have this giant pot of broth soup. This is the place where I got my dashi. You can see that includes all the ingredients I mentioned. They ground it up fresh so you know exactly what you're getting. It is super gelatinous right now. 
smells amazing. Very like hearty. It looks a little crazy right now because there's a lot of stuff in here. You see how it's like super congealed. We did put an entire duck, an entire fish in there. We heat this. Honestly, if you wait a day later, I feel like the flavor is almost intensified. It's kind of like ramen broth. While I'm waiting for the soup, I'm gonna show you the rest of the ingredients I have for the soup noodles. I have these green noodles. They're made with spinach. You can make your own too, like they do in the book. But honestly, I kind of like these noodles and I want to get my veggies in. I actually found these seaweed noodles, which is crazy. I was not expecting to find them, but they kind of look alike, don't they? I also have these seaweed knots that I think will be a good decoration. Last but not least, I have these moro mushrooms. This is actually what they serve in the stewed sea prune soup. I also just want to say that these are very expensive mushroom, $30. One thing I didn't buy that's actually also listed in the sea prune soup recipe is fish maw. I was fully going to buy it. I walked into the store in Chinatown. I was like, do you have this item? They said yes. And I looked at the price tag and it was like $188 for a pound. I don't know, Katara, you have some really bougie taste. Both of these ingredients are in the soup that you love most. Then again, I guess she's a waterbender. She can do whatever she wants. Here's the mushroom in all its glory. Kind of looks like a honeycomb. Smells like shiitake. I wonder if the texture will be similar. I should probably go rehydrate this. I'm gonna start cooking these noodles. And she's surrounded by green noodles. They do look pretty cool though. The soup is now boiling. Ooh, it does smell really nice. I'm going to try and scoop some of this out so I can filter it, because there's a lot of ingredients in here. I got a little pot full of the broth, the mushrooms in here. Fish meat from when I fried the fish, so I'm adding some in there. This breakfast does take a little more time. I'm supposed to season it to taste, but instead of sugar, it calls to use maple syrup instead, probably because it's historically accurate. Oh my gosh, it already has this kind of light sweetness and fattiness that really just greases your lips. That is actually really nice. Oh, that is delightful. I think that's pretty much seasoned. Toss the seaweed in there. It looks just like our spinach noodles. Okay, I think I finally have most of the things ready. I have the seaweed noodles here, the seaweed knots. I also have two little shrimps. Also have my spinach noodles, which I have rinsed in cold water. Just waiting for the broth to finish and then I can plate it up. Very excited for this. Oh my gosh. It just smells so comforting. I don't know if it's because I'm associating it with like ramen soup. Mmm. An entire duck, an entire fish in here. That gives this broth a lot of flavor. Also, what I did was basically combine both the seaweed noodles and the spinach noodles together. What you end up having is this like two different colors of green. A lot of different kinds of texture. The seaweed has this almost like crunchier, chewier texture, whereas the spinach noodles are a little more soft. But it's fascinating because the noodles that the Water Tribe originally had are thinly cut strips of seaweed, and it only became these ropes of wheat after they went to the Earth Kingdom. So uh, this is what I'd imagine she'd make at the Earth Kingdom if she was feeling, you know, a little bit of nostalgia. I can't get over how good this broth is. Expensive moral mushrooms. I feel like it just soaked up so much broth that it just tastes like the broth. Well, the texture is very meaty. Overall though, incredibly nourishing meal. And some water, of course. What a great way to start it off. I'll see you soon for lunch. Can you guess what's coming next? It is lunchtime. All right. Try to find the only green item I had to represent Ba Sing Se, but Earth Kingdom is the theme. I'm gonna be making Aunt Wu's bean curd puffs. They look so good in the animation stacked on a plate, one after another. I feel like food from the Earth Kingdom is probably the one that I'm most familiar with because of how much it draws from Chinese cuisine and it's like all encompassing. So I think it actually highlights a bunch of regional Chinese cuisine, which makes a lot of sense because the Earth Kingdom is huge. It's massive. And because this one specifically uses taro, it kind of reminds me a little bit of food from Hong Kong and Taiwan and how we would have like stuffed bean curd puffs. As a little bonus too, I'm actually 
actually making two things for lunch today. The second one being a little afternoon snack dedicated to our favorite cabbage merchant. But I'll get on that later. Let me show you what I have for these bean curd puffs. I have ginger, garlic, scallions. I got this instead of fermented black beans. I also have these giant tofu puffs. That's pretty huge fitting for the kingdom. The recipe also calls for some sort of flavorful fat, which I actually have here. This is actually from the duck earlier. There was a lot of fat drippings that were just like accumulating at the bottom of the tray. This is what I got from that. Pretty nice. Last but not least, I have this taro that I already steamed. I feel like most people know taro now as taro bubble tea. This is what it looks like. And when you steam it, it's kind of like steaming a potato. It's very starchy, but that's what I did earlier today. Peeled it, chopped it up into smaller pieces. As long as it fits on the plate when you steam it. I feel like I didn't even have to steam this for very long. Maybe around 15 minutes until it was tender. You can see that my chopstick kind of just pokes right through it. And that's how I ended up with this right here. I am going to chop up our aromatics so then we can fry it up. We just need the scallion whites for this. Same thing with the garlic and ginger. Gonna go fry this up. Oh my god. Woo! Just until it's fragrant, pretty much. It smells incredible already. Most of the flavor of the taro is gonna come from right here so makes a lot of sense it's making me hungry this is looking pretty good so put it in a food processor i think i was a little generous with the, the duck fat whoa this is what it looks like right now it's a kind of mushy consistency unfortunately i only have a mini food processor so i'm going to have to add this taro in batches let's give that a try Slowly but surely. It's a very nice color. Consistency is kind of like mashed potatoes. This bowl of taro right here. Give it a quick taste. Ooh, that's nice. Honestly, forget mashed potatoes. Maybe next time I should just bring this to like a potluck or something. I feel like people would eat this straight. Like I would eat this straight. Damn, that's good. No more eating the taro for now. I'm gonna start trying to put it into this tofu puff before we fry it up. There's no way this is not gonna be good. Cut an X on top, trying to create these little flaps. So you can see that I've created like a little box of sorts. I might just try to cut it out. I feel like I'm working at a gourmet Chinese restaurant right now. I'm just removing it manually. Now it's empty. Oh, we did it. That's pretty cool. Probably gonna save these and fry them up for dinner tomorrow. Also, I said we did it, but we only did one. There's all these to go, so. 10 minutes later, I have them all here. There's little pockets right now. Next part is stuffing it with this paste. To make things a little neater, I'm gonna use a piping bag. Zero mess. Taro paste piping bag. Now I'm gonna try filling it in. It. There we go. Ooh, I feel like that's a good amount. Ooh, maybe a little flavor bombs. Chunky one. Here we have them all. Our loaded tofu pockets. Just bringing them over. <laughs> All this deep frying business. Here we go again. Pretty much just making sure it's crispy on the outside and the insides are warm. Didn't put too much oil, but ooh, it is crisping up beautifully. Seeing the first batch out. Ooh, finishing the rest and uh, be right back. The tofu puffs are done. They're very, very crispy. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm just letting it sit for like two minutes or so. I also made some rice that we can eat this with. It's gonna be an amazing lunch. But also remember how I said I did like a little bonus item as an afternoon snack. I'm gonna be making cabbage cookies. You read that right. It says cabbage cookies right here. I feel like no avatar video can be complete if you don't at least dedicate something to the cabbage merchant who has suffered many losses. No! Cabbages! My cabbages! My cabbages! Oh, my cabbages! Oh, my cabbages! 
Also, these cabbage cookies are not made up. They are actually in the universe. The cabbage merchant actually served this when he had a restaurant called Cabbage Delicacies Bistro. These cabbage cookies were like the most popular thing from his restaurant. I know it sounds crazy, but that's also exactly why I wanted to try and make it. So I actually started making the batter earlier this week already. I have an entire head of cabbage here. Beautiful looking cabbage. I can't imagine losing one, let alone losing hundreds. The first step really is to just chop it up roughly so I could give it a good wash and then drain it. After that, it's really just frying it up until it's reduced in size, season it a little bit with salt and sugar. The recipe also calls for it to be deeply charred at the edges. I was a little afraid of burning it. Once it's all cooked down, I then transferred it to a food processor and just pulsed it until it had this paste-like consistency. Once cabbage is done, I started working on the spices. I have two kinds of spices here, whole fennel seeds and whole coriander seeds, and I'm just gently toasting them over the stove top until you know they're lightly brown you really get that fragrant across and because i don't have a spice grinder i'm just using this tiny mortar and pestle just slowly grinding it down the next thing was to make my base cookie dough so i'm just creaming some butter and sugar once it gets to a fluffy consistency that's when i'm adding in the salt the baking powder and the toasted spices after which i'm adding in the cooked cabbage so yes there is an entire head of cabbage in these cookies. The last step really was just to slowly add flour until I have this dough. I'm just putting it in plastic wrap and trying to shape it into a log. I ended up with like around two logs. They've just been chilling in the freezer. Very firm. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice this up and pop it on a tray so we can bake it and enjoy it all together. All these little yellow f specks you see in it, that's cabbage. It's wild. All right, pop these in the oven in 15 minutes. had to resist when I was waiting for the cookies to be done. I really wanted to eat these. Look at them. These are so beautifully puffy. They really do just look like the perfect envelope. Also, I feel like a lot of people requested this when I posted about it on Instagram. I'm sorry I couldn't find a real cactus, but we do have this prickly pear cactus water. So no hallucinations. It's very thirst quenching though. Hopefully it will also be the quenchiest. Oh my God, that's good. It goes so well with rice. I really didn't hold back with filling this up. The tofu puff is so crispy on the outside. That plus the flavor bomb that is inside, it's so dangerous. You could just easily snack on these alone. Could probably eat like five of this in one roll. That is good. Duck fat, it really does give that paste the umami flavor you're looking for. I already know I'll be making this again. We're also gonna try one of these cookies. You can tell just by looking at it how many ingredients there are in here. Ooh, it is very soft and tender. It smells very buttery. Ooh, wait. The texture is actually surprisingly chewy. Pleasant moistness on the inside. It kind of works. That's crazy. If you don't like vegetables, Getting a little full though. I feel like I should go get a little workout in or something. Bend some muscles. See you in a couple hours for dinner. All right, and we're back for dinner time. I feel like I had a pretty big breakfast and lunch, so probably gonna take it easy for dinner. And I was maybe saving one of the dishes I was looking forward to the most for this meal, which are the fire flakes. A lot of people have been looking forward to this one. Arguably one of the most iconic dishes from the Avatar universe. I love things spicy. You know how when Sokka tasted this and then he just like almost died on the spot? I kind of like that. There's something wrong with me. And like most of the recipes before, this one involved quite a bit of steps and a lot of cooking time. The total cooking time here is like seven hours and 30 minutes. So I did a lot of the prep work earlier this week. The first step to making these fire flakes is to make a very flavorful shrimp broth, which involved frying up a bunch of garlic, onion, ginger, chilies. And once I had all those aromatics, I added in my shrimp. The recipe calls for like three cups of shrimp. I think I maybe added four. I really wanted to make sure that the broth was like super, super flavorful because 
this is what's gonna give our flakes their base flavor. After adding in the shrimp and sauteing that for a little bit as if it wasn't hot enough already, I'm adding in more red pepper flakes. Then I season it with like a bit of salt, sugar, and white pepper. I did actually give this stock a try at this point and I almost burnt my tongue off. It was that spicy. It makes your brain melt a little bit kind of spicy. Then I let that simmer just on low heat, strained it and put it in this mason jar. I actually ended up with two jars of this beautiful shrimp stock that will be amazing. I'm sure in pasta, noodle, risotto, maybe I'll even just use this to make some ramen. What I did next was to combine the shrimp stock with these tapioca pearls, which I've never actually had in savory form before. And actually when I was talking to Jenny about it, she deliberately wanted to have tapioca to give it that like, you know, fun, crunchy texture. Kind of into it. Basically, I'm just cooking these pearls in the stock until all the pearls are clear and the liquid kind of has this like gelatinous, jelly-like texture. Once that's ready, I just spread it thinly on like a silicone mat so then I can dry it out in the oven for the next like six to seven hours. Seven hours later, it gave me this huge piece of... It's the first time peeling it. What? It's super thin. It's really just the shrimp broth with the tapioca starch. It smells like pond crackers. It is extremely delicate though. You can see all the little tapioca bubbles in there. It's giving me triple phobia a little bit. Oh my gosh, I already broke it. it kind of gives you goosebumps a little bit, doesn't it? Okay. I'm sure once we fry it, it's gonna be amazing. That is the next step. We're going to break this up and fry it. Here we go again. Order sized pieces. There's no added colors to this, by the way. It's just the color of the shrimp and also, I guess, all the chili we put in. It was also super interesting to hear about how the Fire Nation, their cuisine is mostly based on Japanese cuisine, but because they've essentially, I guess, conquered so many other tribes and nations, they end up having access to a lot of other ingredients. A lot of the dishes are also like reminiscent of Chinese Sichuan cuisine, which is fascinating. Yeah, I've broken all of them into little quarter bits. Kind of a regular shape. Reminds me of those like shrimp chips you find at Asian grocery stores. The ones where it comes in like little round discs and you're supposed to fry them yourselves. I think that's what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna turn on the fan. Give it a little test. Whoa! Is that it? It's that fast? Okay, wait, I was not expecting it to be done that fast, but <laughs> literally our first cracker happened in the span of five seconds. Let me just make sure that's correct. Probably need to turn down the temperature a little bit, but I just want to test the doneness. Already extremely crunchy. I think everything's gonna have to move really quickly for this, so I'm gonna focus on frying. So much texture in here, it's crazy. And here we are. They're done. Oh my gosh. You can definitely see the tapioca bits in it still. And they kind of just break very easily. They're a little browner than I thought they were gonna be. Might be because I spread them out a little too thin, but that's okay. I don't mind a thinner texture. What I do have here though are two different kinds of spices. A Sichuan style mala spice mix. And the other is this very fiery red looking spice powder that I got in Kyoto. Well, this color is very appropriate. Whoa, okay, that is like red, bright red smell the mala in here. I'm gonna go ahead and serve this up. But before I do that, Fire Nation meal is not complete without Uncle Iroh's tea. So I'm gonna make some jasmine tea. I'm using two kinds of tea for Uncle Iroh's special jasmine flower tea. I have the jasmine flowers. You can actually see the little buds in there. And then also Japanese sencha. Premium green tea. The recipe calls to use both of the kinds of teas. A little bit of jasmine. Tea wagon gonna let this steep for around three minutes or so. In the meantime, I'm gonna serve up the fire flakes. snack, my tea, perfect for today's rainy day. I've never thought of combining the two together. It's actually quite nice. 
Thanks, Uncle Iroh. Learned something new today. This is why we love hot leaf juice. Ooh, you definitely smell the seasoning on it. I found this little bamboo container and DIY this red ribbon. Look at the amount of chili on this. Do you see that? Crunchy. Ooh, I was a little crazy with this spice. Really hits the back of your throat there. I like the little pearls in there that make it more fun. I like to think my spice tolerance level is pretty high, but this is like pretty spicy. I feel like you could prank somebody by adding even more spice in there. Really give it that Saka effect. Great finger food, great popcorn. I'm gonna go finish the last episode of the live action Avatar and we'll check back in later for dessert. There's only one left out of the four. You know what's coming. Finally onto our last meal of the day and our last of the four, the Air Nomads, who are known for being really good at dessert. I'll be making the fruit pies by Monk Gyatso, RIP. It's interesting they call it fruit pie because if you look at the ingredients, it's not really what you really associate with pie. There's no puff pastry. If anything, it calls for a lot of nuts. Roasted pistachios for the base, cashews for the filling. I think it's because their cuisine is largely inspired by Tibetan food or food from Nepal. They're also vegetarian and the flavors of their foods are a little more mild. I want to do the fruit pies because if you see Ang's little note here, this is like a little special way that he remembers his mentor. So once again, I actually started working on these pies two days ago, starting with the base where I'm just combining sugar, milk, and butter in a little pot. Then I'm just heating it up until the butter and sugar has melted. That's when I start adding in the milk powder, slowly but surely. And the key here really is to do it gradually because every time you add a little, it thickens a little more. So I've kept on going back and forth, adding a little, mixing it in, adding a little, mixing it in until it becomes almost like a dough. I'm adding in some roasted pistachios, which I already chopped into tiny pieces beforehand. It honestly, at this point, kind of just looks like nougat to me. And I'm just using an ice cream scoop to get a good amount of dough into the mold I'm using here. Trying to press it down flat, not too thin, but not too thick. And I popped it in the fridge before I started working on the filling. I really thought this would be cheesecake situation, but because these items are not exactly available where the air nomads live, the recipe calls for using raw cashews to give you that creaminess. So here I have my raw cashews in a bowl where I just let it soak overnight. The next day you can see when I pick it up and press down on it, it kind of just breaks a lot more easily. The next thing is to put all the soaked cashews into a blender along with a bunch of other ingredients, maple syrup, some milk, melted coconut oil, salt, and also fresh lemon juice. I guess it's almost like making nut milk. And I'm just blending it all up until it's super smooth. And this is where you see that it almost has that cheesecake mixture consistency. I did give it a little taste at this point and it honestly just tastes like a tangy yogurt. Once the molds are filled, that's when I pop them into the freezer. Which brings us to today. These are now frozen solid. Oh, there you go. It looks almost like a mini cheesecake. You can see the base filling there with the pistachios. I'm gonna make the meringue really quick and we're gonna pipe it on. So now that I have all the colors, it is time to pipe them onto the pies. the day. I tried to make it look as similar to the animation as possible. Do a little transition here. Clearly my air bending skills need work. My hands are a terrifying purple right now. Last bite of today. I'm just gonna eat it. I feel like the texture of the filling is very nice. It is very much like cheesecake. The base is a little too sweet for me. And honestly, for this one mostly, I just taste the ube because there was a lot of extract up here. That marks the end of today, my 24 hour journey. I feel like it was more like a one week journey, two weeks if you count the research, but I hope I did the foods justice. It was fascinating for me to do a little deep dive into understanding the origins and trying to make it in a way that is most accurate in the universe. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If there's anything else from the universe that you wish you saw, let me know. 
you never know maybe we'll do another one thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye